Hello mate and welcome to this brand new Unity tutorial series. This first episode we're going to talk about some of the absolute fundamentals. We're going to have a very quick whip round tour of the interface and then we're going to add some bits to our scene and manipulate them. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon that really helps me out and of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons your names will be running over the screen at the end of the video. If you are interested in supporting the channel, there's instructions on how to do so in the description down below. So let's jump in. So what you can see here is I've got a Unity window open. I've created a Unity 3 3D project and I'm simply sitting looking at what the game or what the engine has presented me with. Now, on the left hand side, we can see this hierarchy. The hierarchy is a list of all of the objects in our current scene. Our current scene is displayed in this center window just here. And we can parent things to objects just like we can in software like Das Studio. So for example, sample scene is our parent and their main camera and directional light are children of that parent. However, I can drag directional light into main camera and make it a child of the camera however obviously I don't want to do that so I'm going to drag that away from there on the right hand side as you can see now that I've got directional light selected our inspector is showing a number of properties and dependent on what object I have selected in the scene you can see that these properties in the inspector change it's a contextual menu and it shows you what handles or what controls are available for each specific thing that you have selected in the scene and we're going to play around with this a bit more later on at the bottom we have our project tab now the project tab is different from the hierarchy in that it shows you everything in your entire game not just in the current scene your game may consist of various different levels various different scenes and the project will show you everything you currently have imported into your entire game so that you can select and find them straight away. So if I select the scenes tab, you can see sample scene. The scene that we are currently in is actually displayed here in the assets tab and we can change the name of that if we want to. So I just click on that. And I could just call this level one or something like that. The following scenes have been changed on the disk. Do you want to reload the scenes? Yes, just hit reload. Now you can see at the top there, in the hierarchy, the, the scene has now changed to level one. Also in this bottom section here, we also have the console. It's in a separate tab to the project, but what this section will do is it will display any errors or any notifications that you require. Perhaps you've made a change to some of your script files that maybe don't quite add up or something along those lines. This is the section where those messages will appear that tell you what needs to be done in order to rectify the problem. So that's where we are with regards to the interface. If you want to configure the interface, you can drag these tabs around the screen and put them wherever you want. And you can click on this layout tab in the bottom, the top right hand corner here, and you can actually save your layout as a custom layout. Or failing that, if you change something uh, by accident, you can just go back to default by clicking on the default there nice and simple there are of course other panels that you can open by clicking on the window tab and you can just bring out all of these extra tabs that go in there and put them wherever on the screen you wish however for now we're just going to stick with the default settings so what we want to do now is we're actually going to add a cube to our scene so what we're going to do is in the hierarchy we're going to right click and we're going to click on select 3d object and we're going to hit cube and as you can see now, our cube has appeared in our scene. We can give it a name if we want to. So let's change its name while it's highlighted and we'll just call this floor, for example. And now if you look on the right hand side in the inspector where I've named it, it now has the name floor. It also has transform, a cube mesh filter, a mesh renderer and a box collider. We're going to talk about these a little bit more in a few moments, but just for now, Let's have a look and see that our cube is there in our scene and it currently has a widget that allows us to move it around the scene if we so choose. Now at the moment we're quite a long distance away from our cube and if we want to have a look around it to see all the different sides of it, we can just simply right click in our window and now as you can see if I click on my right mouse button and I move the mouse around I can actually aim my camera and if I use the W, A, S and D keys I can actually maneuver myself around the scene and I can even use Q and E 
to maneuver myself up and down. So I can actually see all the way around this object like so and hopefully not get lost in my scene too much. But that's a really, really handy way of navigating around my scene as if I were actually in the game. So looking at these properties on the right hand side, let's just close these up one by one using this little gray arrow in the top left hand corner of each window and let's just focus on the transform section first now for those of you who are completely uninitiated in the world of three-dimensional stuff transform basically refers to the position rotation and scale properties of every object in this case we have a cube that's currently at the world origin which is 0 0 0 on all three axes it has no rotation on any axis either, and it has a scale multiplier of one on each of the axes as well. So it is a one meter by one meter by one meter cube at zero, zero, zero. If we want to adjust those, if what you see, I hover my mouse over the X, you can see the little arrows appearing either side of the mouse. And if I click and drag, I can actually maneuver my object in all of the scales just by using the mouse alternatively i can click on the widget in the screen as you can see if i click on the arrow in the direction i want to go in or if i click on one of these squares it allows me to move it in two planes at once nice and simple however if you're working with strictly cubic or rectangular objects then it can sometimes be easier to work with the transform pane instead to make sure that you get everything absolutely spot on and accurate now, if we rotate around a little bit, so I'm just gonna rotate around my object a smidge, and we look at it from the side, what you can actually see is that the center of the object is at zero, zero, zero. If I, however, wanted the bottom of the object to be on the center, so if I wanted this cube to appear as if it were on the floor, then I would have to adjust Y, which is the up direction, to 0.5. And now our cube is located on the floor nice and simple now additional to using the transform screen there what you might have noticed was a few moments ago that my widget actually on the object changed and what happened there was I used a keyboard shortcut to change the widget but we can actually access those widgets at the top here as well in the top left hand corner what you can see is you've got the hands tool which allows you to move yourself around like so you have the move tool which gives you the widget that we were just using there we have the rotate widget tool which provides us with the ability to rotate our object on any of the three planes then we have the scale tool which allows us to scale our object on again any of the planes like so Next, we have the rectangle tool, which allows us to adjust on that specific two planes. So we can just change our object like that. And then we've also got the move, rotate, our scale tool, which is the sort of universal widget that has everything in it. And then we have the editor tool, which allows you to edit the box collider and so on and so forth. But again, generally speaking, I would avoid, avoid using the universal move widget tool because it just means that you're going to get potentially misclick and it's just going to be a faff. So use these buttons at the top here to change between whichever tool you want to use. Now I'm going to reset my X to zero. I'm going to reset my Z to zero. I'm actually going to change my scale on the X axis to probably about 10. Now I'm going to change my Y axis to about 0.3, I think. And I'm going to go with, I don't know, maybe like 3 as my Z scale there. Just gives us a nice big flat platform there that we can use to be our platform for moving forward in our tutorials. So on the right hand side, again, coming back to the inspector panel, what we have here is the cube mesh filter don't necessarily have to faff around with this too much just know that your geometry is really contained within this section so because we've got a cube our cube mesh is contained in there and the next bit down is the mesh renderer this is the bit that tells unity how to visually represent our objects on the screen we've got lighting probes additional settings and materials we're going to come back to that in a moment but box collider is the last one 
Now all Box Collider does, I don't know if you can see, but once I selected Box Collider, we actually saw a very faint green outline appear inside the orange outline of our object and what that's doing is showing us where the collision mesh around this object is. Every object in a 3D game which the character or the objects in the game require to interact with, i.e. the floor, walls, pick up a balls, anything like that requires a collision mesh so that the Unity engine can detect when something intersects something else i.e. if you have two cubes and when they touch you want something to happen the box collider or the collision mesh around those two squares or those two cubes when they intersect each other then a trigger will tell unity that they have indeed collided and then whatever action you require to happen will happen so that's what is happening in this case so for example in the case of this if this were the floor of the mesh then we'd have it as a box collider mesh around the floor that tells us when the character is actually standing on the floor or not or if they've jumped or if they're flying or if they're underneath it bumping the head on it or whatever so this is just making the object effectively solid then we come back to our lighting and materials. What you can see here is that we have a material and currently it's set to default material, which is this white material. And I'm gonna say material one more time, just for good measure. But as you can see, it's just a white box with no really redeeming features about it, nothing unique or special. That's the default material. So in order to create our own, what we want to do is in our assets folder, we're just gonna right click and we're gonna create a folder we can call this materials and then inside our materials folder we can actually right click and we can create a new material by clicking on that there and then what you can see is we've got our material and now in our inspector we actually have the options here that we can alter with regards to the way that it looks and so we can actually use the albedo option here to create a uh, different color material so let's just give our floor i don't know let's go for a slightly sort of greeny kind of floor we want it to look like the ground or grass down we in so nice color like that and then that's fine like that and we can even add metal metallicity to it if we want to just make it slightly metallic or we can reduce the smoothness to make it a little bit rough and then once we have our material selected if you want to we can just drag and drop it onto our object in the scene and alternatively, we can go click select our object in the scene like that. And then in the materials tab there, we can actually drag our material onto that there and that assigns it like that. And now what you can see is our object has got our shiny new green material on it and it looks different. I'm not gonna say it looks better or worse because it's just a plain green, but it is what it is. That's how it looks. That pretty much covers everything I'm going to talk about in this episode, guys. I hope you found that informative. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as I'm sure you all will. I will see you in the next one, but until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.